We'll start at this end. <laughs> you don't see this guy's name very much in the shop, and it's not because he doesn't make a lot of guitars. They're just so well made. I'm gonna sound like a fanboy this whole video. I'm just gonna warn you right now. Um, this guitar came in, specs perfect. String height, perfect. Neck relief, perfect. Intonation, the best intonation I've ever seen on a guitar come through. The Peterson was just on lock every string, like not even fidgeting. And if this guy was running right, ah, man, urgh, it's got to go back for more repairs. It, it was there just a little bit ago. It's got to go back. But this compensated saddle is just so wonderfully made. Um, whoever did the work on that design, like perfect score, A plus, turn that in for grade. Wow. Uh, but it's here to change string gauge, so we may have to adjust the neck a little bit. And when you adjust the neck, sometimes you got to adjust uh, your string height here back at the bridge uh, and then make sure that the pickups match all of that. And then we're going to clean it a little bit. The owner had no complaints, zero complaints on the guitar. He just said he wanted to uh, have me go through it to make sure there was nothing uh, that, that didn't need attention. And I get that. I spent a little bit of time. I always play test the guitars when they come in. Um, it's kind of fun for me uh, to play test them, but it also gives me the lay of the land in terms of, of what are the good and bad spots uh, on this particular guitar. And then if you're going to see, you know, multiple of the same guitars, making sure that you map out what's important to look at. So Anyway, we're going to start there. I'm going to take these old strings off because they're not going to help rough it in. We're going to change the strings and then we're going to come back and look at all the settings that we have to adjust. This does have the locking tuners. These are actually the one part of the guitar I don't really care for. The wind, uh, it's really hard to get the wind underneath. Uh, so the strings, you can see, uh, they, they're they not in a flat plane like I like to see them. So I'm gonna work on that a little bit and see if I can get the new strings a little bit better. I'll come back and show you what I come up with. These are the heavy bottoms. Uh, the owner likes to play in drop D. So he got the heavy bottoms, number 10s. So he switched them from nines to 10s. I would suspect maybe just a little bit of a tighten on the truss rod to counteract that little bit of extra tension, but we'll see. This is the portion of the program where you put a little oiled linseed oil on the fretboard and just kind of get it nice. This is a very simple process. We don't go crazy with the linseed oil. Some people put drops down the neck and that's fine. You can do it however you want. I just always put a little bit on a paper towel and then go fret by fret. Make sure you got good coverage. You wanna get it right up next to the fret wire. You don't wanna go crazy and douse it and all that kind of stuff. You just wanna give it a little bit of oil to keep <clears throat> the pores in the wood full. I'm just starting with my fine fret eraser and that's where I'm going to end. So it's just to kind of just to kind of give these a little bit of a, a polish. Sometimes you get a little finger plaque, <laughs> finger cheese build up on there, or I don't even know how to say it. It's almost like there's a little bit of a burr sometimes in the middle of the fret where the fret wire is rubbing against it, where it hasn't made a dent yet, but it just, it almost feels like a really fine grit sandpaper when you're playing. On these wraparound bridges like this, you can just take a, a cloth of some kind. Uh, some people use an eraser. There's, there's all kinds of little tricks. Just something to jam in the back there. I just take a thick feeler gauge. And essentially what I do is I grab the two E strings and make them be the holders. So right there, um, you can see how tight I've pulled it uh, on this end. You can see on this end, we've pulled it pretty tight and I've tightened down the locking part of this tuner and I really don't want any wraps on this low E. So I pulled it pretty tight. That's a little sharp, but it'll fall. So uh, that's how we're gonna handle this E string. Uh, cause I, 
I really do. I want the plane of these strings to be all pretty much the same. So I'll do the rest of these and we'll come back. So just uh, looking at this after after the string gauge change, I don't, it's so hard to show some of this stuff on camera. Um, but we're at the 12th fret, we're right where we were, which was 564. And um, on the treble E, we're a little bit higher than we were. Now there's always a chance uh, that one of these turned a little bit while we had the bridge off. And, you know, we'll, we'll say that may, may be the case. But my guess is, uh, that string height will be an indication that our neck is just a little bit different than it was a few minutes ago when we had the old strings on. So capo on the first fret, finger down here. Uh, you can do the last fret, you can do where the body joins, you can do where you think the truss rod ends. It's all pretty close to the same, especially if there's a little fall off on the fretboard. I can't remember if PRS puts a little fall off in there or not, but if there is, sometimes it'll touch another fret. It doesn't look like it does, so I'm gonna say they don't have fall off. But we're just here right at the last fret. This is 10 thou, and we're checking for the greatest gap in the fretboard. So usually that's somewhere in here in the five to nine range, let's say. It's different for a lot of guitars, and if a if a neck has a little bit of a roller coaster to it, uh, it'll be in a little different spot. But it's just a tick loose right here. I think the uh, eighth fret is where I'm seeing the biggest gap. So we're gonna give it just a little bit of a tighten and then we'll check it again. And it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. So loose is this way. And I usually wanna come off just to see if the truss rod's in good shape and it is. Uh, as you would expect. So we're gonna just tighten it that much right there. It wasn't much of a tighten. Back here, it's not gonna take much. It could probably use another little bit. So we'll start kind of down there, bring it up to right about there. That is Yeah, that's right where I want it, at 10 thou. Then uh, quick, and, and I always have to, <laughs> the caveat here, um, I'm not the best guitar player, I'm sloppy. So if you hear string buzz, it may not be the guitar. Now we will pull out our string height gauge, checking at the 12th fret, we are right at 564 on the bass and we're a little bit higher than we want to be on the treble so we're just a tick high of just a tick over 464s and i think yeah we should be able to just turn that down even under tension turn it down let's see where that put us that put us just just slightly above. I'm just going to give it one more tickle there. There we go. And that is right where we want it with 464s. Quick little retune here. Double check. Perfect. Yeah. I, uh, I love it. No string buzz. Yeah. <laughs> Those are expensive chords. Now, little intonation for the nation.
really on a compensated bridge like this, you can really just intonate if you want to on the two E strings and that one was perfect. That one's just dead on, so my work here is done on the intonation. Pickup height is the last thing that we're gonna look at. And actually, the owner said something about uh, the two knobs here not matching. I think these are both high, and they are 664s on the bass side, 564s on the treble for those keeping score. So we need to go way down on that one. Anybody else always do these backwards? It's just counterintuitive to me. Turn them down to go up, up to go down. One of the customer complaints was that these knobs didn't match and I thought he was talking about the position of the knobs and you can see uh, they do match. But when you roll this knob, it's got a fair amount of resistance in it. When you roll this one, there's no resistance there. And this is actually some kind of a coil tap, uh, coil split, I don't know which one. And generally those pots are so very different in the way they're assembled. I don't think there's any way you can make that match unless he wants to replace this pot with one like this and then maybe uh, put a switch here instead of this coil tap. So we'll talk about that and see if he wants to mess with the electronics. Here we are wrapping this one up. Obviously we've got a little bit of a check to do tomorrow to make sure that our neck relief adjustments are gonna stay put and that all of the other adjustments are gonna be good as well. It feels like Paul's putting a sticker on here now uh, instead of a silk screen. It's kind of raised. That's interesting. Um, anyway, this, what a beautiful guitar. <laughs> if you get a chance to uh, buy one of these Mira guitars or have one given to you or something like that, uh, I would highly recommend it. I thought these were normally an SE, but this has the handwritten serial number on the back. It says Paul Reed Smith. It doesn't say SE. Does not have a bolt on neck. Uh, you know, walks like a duck, talks like a duck. <laughs> This one talks like a real PRS, or a core line PRS is what I should say. Coil tap. Just a few minor adjustments on this guy. Different string gauge. Thanks for hanging out. Working on some guitars today. We'll catch you on the next one, all right? If you would like more guitar-related content, click that subscribe button. And as always, visit SkyscraperGuitars.com for guitar tools and accessories.